name is Mercedes Cornelius. I'm an incoming fourth year at UCLA and I'm an undergraduate researcher in Paul Weiss's group in the chemistry department. My friends don't always think so, but I'm pretty funny. Thank you for loving me. Mercedes out. We're here at Nerd Girl Nation with Mercedes Cornelius. Welcome to our show. We're really Thank excited you. to have you. Now you have a really diverse background. You grew up in Florida and you're one of seven yes. children. Yes. How do you even manage to study with that much going on? My older siblings didn't live, didn't live in the household. Mm -hmm. So it was mostly my two younger siblings who was always there. When I was 15, I moved out. You moved out for a good reason, right? Yes. You moved out to go study, not because yes. you- Yes, I moved out because I wanted to <laughs> challenge myself more academically by not being home and going to the different school that had more emphasis in physics and math. Now you've, you're studying at UCLA. Yes. And you've been doing research. Yes. Now most people don't get excited when we're going to talk about biophysics, but today we are going to get very excited about it because you're going to communicate what it is and how cool it really is. Biophysics is more of the emphasis of, of biological systems in physics. And I got into biophysics when I discovered I also wanted to pursue medicine. And I realized there is also a biophysics component of physics. And I felt like that would be a good complement to my MD track. Now you do stuff called organ on a chip. That's one of the projects that okay. I'm, I'm doing. Well, first yeah. of all, talk about what you do with that technology. Essentially what organs on a chip is, it's supposed to be a model that wants to replace the animal model mm -hmm. um, to test cancer therapeutics in order to make it safely into the clinical trials for humans. So that means no more animal testing. No more animal testing. That would be awesome. Yeah, that would I be really awesome. I love bunny rabbits and it makes me very upset to see bunny rabbits being tested on. How far away are we from creating cyborgs? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm a physicist. <laughs> organ on the chips can kind of be cyborgs if we find a way to have all a whole bunch of organs re be represented on the chip. Besides that, um, I don't know what you're talking about, like serving you at home and stuff? No, like, just like I'm trying to take over the world. Oh. I don't think it's going to happen. You sounded like you'd be great to have around when the zombie apparatus begins. Oh. If that would happen, I would just drink Red Bull and get wings and fly away. <laughs> That's just There's, scary. Yeah. You've also got a very mapped out life plan. Tell us what it is. I would like to do research in China um, in traditional Chinese medicine so I can be able to apply it to some of the research that I'm interested in for my MD PhD. Well, have you been a role model for your siblings? I would hope I am. I would hope I have been. Role models are so important. What were some of your role models? Albert Einstein. I love him with all my heart. Good kid. Um, yeah, he's so awesome. Like if he had a daughter, if he had another daughter, I would think it would be me. Because my name is Mercedes and Mercedes is German. I'm just joking. Also, my PI now, Paul mm -hmm. Weiss. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely awesome role models to have. You have to define PI for our audience. Um, the principal investigator, the people who head the lab or head the um, the research group mm -hmm. that you're a part of. Okay, so this yeah. would be the dad in Powerpuff Girls. Yeah, he kind of could be, right? But he wouldn't have any researchers. Because it was always just him. He Sugar and spice and everything nice. These were the ingredients chosen to create the perfect little girl. He would be the PI in, the, in Powerpuff Girls. We never Girls. really broke down why a grown man just built those three girls. Maybe he, didn't, he wasn't able to have kids any other way in the <laughs> foster home weren't really feasible in that town. Mojo Jojo, he was always up to something. Yeah, say exactly. <laughs> okay, Willy Wonka is the perfect idea of a principal investigator and all the little loopers are like the undergraduate researchers. So basically it's like minions. <laughs> I love cartoons because I'm 10. <laughs> so we'd like to introduce you to Lisa Goal. Lisa, are you there? There we go, there's our oh youngest guest. Hi! Cute. Lisa, let me introduce our other guest. This is Mercedes Hi. Cornelius. Hi, Mercedes. Hi, how are you doing? Welcome to the show. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having us. We're networking here. Oh, so, what kind of, so what kind of things do you do? I actually work at a startup company in Cambridge, Massachusetts. I do medical diagnostics. It's really focusing on physics, medicine, and nanotechnology. Oh, cool. And yeah, and the greater mission and vision of our organization is really to deploy our technologies to the developed and the developing world. Is nanotechnology like magic school bus where Frizz used to jump the little bus down and then we'd go inside and then we'd figure out why Arnold was sick? So I don't know magic school bus. <laughs> you don't know the magic school bus? The classic 90s cartoon magic school bus. 
<laughs> okay, well, basically, she was a terrible teacher that never got permission slip signed. She just took a bunch of kids <laughs> and just threw them into a bus, and then she'd just go inside people. Seatbelts, everyone! <laughs> you gotta check it out. I, th I think this show's gonna blow your mind. <laughs> When it comes to nanotechnology, let's just say I was Australian and I'm in an incredibly tight blue shirt and I really have no idea what you were talking about. How would what you do affect me in my daily life? Well, I would say that you're um, using nanotechnology, we could make your tight blue shirt tight. <laughs> <laughs> it's tight. <laughs> Um, and it would remain tight, regardless of how many times you throw it in the washer. And how does nanotechnology do that? The thing about nanotechnology is that when you're working on such small scales, just by playing with uh, the actual fibers that go into making the material for that tight blue shirt, using nanotechnology, we could make those fibers tighter. Uh -huh. um, so when you wear your shirt, you have that nice tight feel. A really general sense like you can think of like nanotechnology just being like a really really small technology that um, a lot of fields use to do a whole bunch of different things that's what makes it really exploratory for a lot of scientists to look at it's and and, it, and its smallness um, comes in handy when you want to do things such as like a medical diagnosis or like um, using um, like in our field um, bio nanotechnology in order to uh, make organs on the chip. And that's the beauty of this, the science, is that um, it has the potential to help us in so many ways. So you know? what, what's your greatest challenge been throughout your career? To you look at every challenge you're given on a daily basis and figure out how to address it. And there's like 15 different ways to address it. And sometimes the most creative ways are the best ways. And, and that's when all the fun hits. What did you do besides science? And what, what got you here? I did... Um, Break dancing in college. I did. Whoa, you did break dancing? <laughs> I know, I did break dancing in college, um, which is really interesting because a lot of engineers were involved in that. I had a natural affinity for science. I really loved science. I really loved math. I knew that engineering was more of a um, direction for me. I think you screwed up. You should have stuck with the break dancing. <laughs> you could have been in a Drake video right now. <laughs> Stead, here you are, all successful with a kid. You could have been getting called up on that cell phone. If you saw a 13-year-old girl today and, and you were to give her some inspiration, what would you say to her? I would encourage her to pursue math and science and engineering because um, we need more women in the field and to not uh, be intimidated. Mercedes, what about you? What are you going to tell that 13-year-old girl? Oh, boy. Pursue something that you think would make you always think you're having fun. We want to thank you both ladies for being on the show today. Thank you for watching. Biophysicists are my kind of hip. Nanotechnology like an organ on a chip. The girl I'm crazy about your beautiful mind. But you say you've got a crush on Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein? Seriously? I mean, seriously? What does he have that I don't? Except being the smartest man to ever live. What will he do that I won't? Except explain how things are relative. He's smarter than me. And I'll admit his hair is divine. That's why your heart belongs to Albert Einstein.